Legends, I hope you're all fantastic. On today's video, I want to show you how to pull some magical tones with the 2290 type in the Axe FX3 delay block. The same delay block is also found on the FM9 and the FM3. I recently did a video with TC's 2290 pedal, which sounds fantastic and does a great job of recreating the workflow and user interface of the original rack. I also own the original rack. It's sitting in my studio rack. It's an amazing sounding delay and it is a pretty important piece in the history of digital delay units, both from the way it was engineered and the way it sounds. But we can get all of this stuff in the Axe FX3. The 2290 block in here sounds bang on to my ears and my measurements as well. So let's dive straight in. I've got the ODS100 clean amp at the moment, my free cab IR, and I've just punched in 333 milliseconds of delay. 45% feedback, the mix at 50%, and I have gone to the modulation tab here and just turned the modulation down. We'll get to modulation in a second, but this essentially would be like just setting up the 2290 for a nice clean delay. Let's have a listen to what it does. <laughs> That also serves as a good test for your playback system. If you are listening in mono, you wouldn't have heard any delay there. You would have seen me just grooving out to the delays going, he has finally lost his mind. Leon, are you okay? I'm definitely okay, you're just listening in mono. And the same thing will happen if you place this delay block in front of a mono amp. The reason is, if you go to the more tab, you can see the phase reverse is set to right. The real 2290 had the phase of its two output channels inverted to give you this super wide psychoacoustic effect. So you can turn that off if you just want the tone in mono, set it to none, but I'm going to leave it on the default setting of right. And I'm just going to roll with this delay right here. The first thing we're going to do, and one cool thing about the real 2290 is there's so many different ways to modulate parameters. We're going to add some modulation to the delay line in here. So exactly the same settings, but under the modulation setting, I've set LFO1, I've just left it as a sine wave. The rate is at 0.7 hertz. The depth is at 55%. So if you want to change the rate or the speed and then the intensity or the depth, use those two controls right there. Let's have a listen to what it sounds like. <laughs> Now the Axe FX goes beyond what the original units are capable of because you have several selections for the waveform shape. You can also go in and have really fine control over the EQ of the feedback path on there. The original 2290 does let you select different filters, but they are preset amounts in here. You can really hone in if you wanted to say, set this filter to 3,366 hertz for the high cut on there. You can do that and you can crank that modulation up. It's gonna sound a little bit more like a warm analog delay. <laughs> So that takes care of the time modulation on the original unit as well as the filters. Again, the great advantage here is we're not limited by the original hardware. We can totally customize that to our taste. The 2290 is probably best renowned for being a dynamic 
digital delay. And one of the ways you could incorporate the dynamics was to create a duct delay. The way we do that on the Axe FX3 is to go to the More tab and play around with the ducker. So I've set the ducker up for 18 dB of attenuation, release time at 120 milliseconds, and the threshold at minus 45. What this is going to do is that when I'm playing, it's going to turn the delay level down. And when I stop playing, the delays are going to bloom back up. This is extremely effective if you like big, wet delays, but you're playing leads and you don't want your leads to get cluttered up. I'll let you hear it clean and then with some dirt from the USA Mark IV lead, because of course I'm going to use that one for dirt. <laughs> So that's how you achieved a duct delay with the 2290. The great thing as well, and I keep going on about the great things of the Axe FX because it does expand upon the original 2290 in so many ways, is that phase reverse trick, the modulation, the filtering, and the ducker apply to all the delay types, not just the 2290 type. But we're here to talk about the 2290 type, so let's keep rolling. The next thing we want to do is create a panning delay on here. So what I've done is I've taken the echo pan parameter and turned it up to 100. Then in the modulation section, I've mapped LFO3 to the pan parameter in here. Then I can play around with the rate and depth on there, or again, the speed and the intensity of the panning. And now my beautiful 2290 delay is going to pan around the stereo spectrum. This one is pretty amazing for leads. It creates so much space. <laughs> And combining the ducking feature with the panning feature in there, I think the word for that one is glorious. I love that for leads. Let's move on now to another great use for the original 2290. It's an amazing chorus and flanger as well, and we can recreate that by using time modulation like we did earlier for the long mod delay. We just need to use a much shorter delay time in here. So I've set up the 2290 in another delay block. Time is at 15 milliseconds for a chorus, no feedback on there. And I've set the mix to 50%. I've actually turned the level down by minus three because of the phase reverse on here. This adds quite a bit of level to your original signal. This gets you closer to unity gain. Leave it to zero if you like the boost. And then modulation, I've just set up with my preferred parameters in here. This is such a great chorus. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
That has got to be one of my favourite chorus effects, period. I love that so much. Uh, back to a clean sound, if we take an even shorter delay and add some feedback and play around with the modulation again, you know, set the rate and depth to whatever you want. These are just my preferred settings on here. We'll create a flanger. And what's cool, again, on the axe effects is we can have the feedback either be positive or negative in there. So if we want to create different types of flanges or flangi, as you might want to call them. Uh, it's not a real world. Let's just leave that where it is. Uh, we can just set this to positive or negative values. So let's hear it with positive 85% and then negative 85%. Now one fun thing you can do there is use the master time control to get even shorter delays on there and create some really cool comb filter style effects on there. You can crank it up as well or you could assign a modifier to this like the envelope follower and create a dynamic flanger on there. You can apply the panner and the ducker and the filters to the chorus and flanger sounds as well, which is pretty awesome. A few more scenes in here. Uh, basically, short delays sound really good with the 2290 as well, if you want to kind of slap back style effect. <laughs> Another great application for LFO3 in the modulation tab over here, much like on the real 2290, is instead of assigning it to the echo pan parameter on here and having the delays pan around, you can assign LFO3 to the level of the delays and you create a tremolo style delay. <laughs> Now, one thing that the Axe FX3 Ducker can't do at the moment are negative Ducker values on there. If you wanted to create a gated delay, meaning when you're playing, instead of the delays being turned down, uh, they're left at their normal level. But when you stop playing, the delays are cut off. Well, we can recreate that, place a 2290 in parallel with the classic gate type in here. I've just set the attack and release times quite low on here. So when I play, I get a nice rhythmic delay. When I stop, it gets gated out. <laughs> All 
right, a totally non-awkward segue, but I did want to include this. I forgot to include it when I was shooting the video and I've been sitting here editing it. And I got to this part and I went, I forgot to talk about the preamp and the frequency response of the rack. If you saw my 2290 pedal video, I did a comparison between the pedal and the rack with identical settings. And most people noticed that the rack was a little bit brighter. I have measured the frequency response of my rack unit and it hypes the highs ever so slightly. Furthermore, the 2290 has an adjustable input gain control that you can actually slam and drive the preamp a little bit if you want to. We can recreate that on the axe. They're in my blocks library. We want this little pre-EQ that's labeled TC2290 pre-EQ. You can see it's just giving a little boost around 11K. And you can also place this 2290 preamp, which is just the tape distortion. I tried my best to match the sound of the 2290 rack preamp being driven slightly with this tape distortion in here. I think it works pretty well. What I'm going to do is just play you some examples and bring each of these in. This is pretty subtle, but if you do want that extra little bit of fairy dust on your 2290 tones or your delay tones in general, these work really, really nicely. So what I'll do is I'll bring in the pre-EQ to make things brighter and then I'll bring in the drive. I'm going to play that riff you've heard a hundred times by now when I play with delays. <laughs> Subtle, but it's kind of fun having these capabilities in here if you want to use them. Uh, anyway, back to the regularly scheduled programming. That should cover most of the functions from the real 2290 in the Axe FX3. If you don't want to spend the time dialing in these, I'll put the presets up online for you to download. You can also grab my free blocks library, which has several 2290 types, as well as a 2290 chorus in the chorus block. So you can use those in conjunction on your FM3, FM9, or of course on your Axe FX3, for example. If I went to the blocks library down here and I said, oh, you know what I want is that glorious 2290 pan delay over here, I can load it in. Uh, at the moment, I'm running it in parallel, so I should turn the mix up to 100%, the bypass mode to mute in, and I'll turn the input gain down a little bit on here. When I kick this in, I've got instant access to that amazing panning duct delay. <laughs> Hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. Again, you can apply all of these tricks to any delay type in the Axe FX3, whether it's the ducker, it's setting up a panning delay, it's the phase reverse trick. There's so, so much to explore in here. Sometimes it is nice to just say, hey, there's a physical unit out there that had some limitations because of the technology at the time or because of the limitations the engineers put on the usable parameters. So maybe if we limit ourselves to those things, we can get some really great results out of the delay block. You can do that, get all this dialed in or just grab my blocks and load them in. And then you can customize them way beyond what the original hardware can do. It's a best of both worlds approach in my opinion. I really hope you enjoyed the video. And if you like this kind of stuff, consider supporting me directly on Patreon or buying some of the music that I make with my band Ragdoll. Otherwise, be safe, be good to one another, and I'll see you all next time. Cheers. Yeah.